by Desert Rock. An oasis. God is amazing. Welcome to one of my favorite sites in all of Israel, En Gedi. Located on the west coast of the Dead Sea and about 12 miles north of Masada, En Gedi is an oasis in the middle of the Judean desert. When I say middle of the desert, it's not an exaggeration. So here is a satellite view of En Gedi, and with this view you can see nothing around it but parched landscape. But when we take a look at it from a different angle, you get a better idea of just how miraculous and special En Gedi really is. Now you may wonder, where is this fresh water actually coming from? Well, there are two main springs that supply the fresh water here. Nahal Aragat, which runs by the modern town of En Gedi, and Nahal David, which runs through the reserve, which is where we toured. Both streams originate from the top of the Judean mountains located back here. It is a beautiful example of God's handiwork. En Gedi was mentioned a number of times in the Bible. In Joshua, En Gedi was given to the tribe of Judah as part of their possession. In the Song of Songs, the Shulamite references En Gedi when describing her love for her husband, King Solomon. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, King Jehoshaphat was told a large army of Moabites, Ammonites, and Edomites were coming to attack from En Gedi. Alarmed, King Jehoshaphat went to the Lord about it. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verses 15, God responded, This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God's. How often do we embrace fear instead of faith when faced with troubles? Who do you run to first when impending difficulties are heading your way? Perhaps you're facing a battle right now. Just remember, the battles we face are ultimately in God's hands. We just need to trust Him. Now, through the miraculous power of God, the enemies were defeated without Judah ever having to fight. In my last video on the Dead Sea, I read what Ezekiel chapter 47, verses 8 and 9 describes during the future millennial reign of Christ, stating that the Dead Sea will become a fresh water lake. In the next verse, it says, Fishermen will stand along the shore from Engedi to Engeglium. There will be places for spreading nets. The fish will be of many kinds, like the fish of the Mediterranean Sea. Now, the most famous story featuring Engedi is found in 1 Samuel chapter 24, featuring David prior to becoming king. I will not read the chapter, but basically, while on the run through the deserts of Judah from King Saul, David and his men came to Engedi. Saul received word where David was located and went in pursuit. David and his men hid in a cave. Saul arrived and needed to relieve himself, and it just so happened he entered the cave that David was hiding in. David cut off part of King Saul's robe but never revealed himself until Saul left the cave. In a rare moment of calmness from King Saul, he appreciated David for not harming him, and they both went their separate ways. It was an awesome experience walking through this area, seeing many of the naturally made caves, one of which could have been the cave David hid in. And I even drank some of the water from the spring that David and his men absolutely would have drank from to refresh themselves. But there's one more part of scripture I want to share with you. Have mercy on me, my God, have mercy on me, for in you I take refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God most high, to God who vindicates me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends forth his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I am forced to dwell among ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. They spread a net for my feet. I was bowed down in distress. They dug a pit in my path, but they have fallen into it themselves. My heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. Awake, my soul. Awake, harp and lyre. I will awaken the dawn. I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing of you among the peoples. For great is your love, reaching to the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. So what does Psalms chapter 57 have to do with En Gedi? Well, like many of the Psalms, chapter 57 has a subscription at the beginning. It reads, For the director of music, to the tune of Do Not Destroy, of David, of Michtam, when he had fled from Saul into the cave. So while hiding from King Saul, who was trying to kill him, David wrote Psalms 57. Now, I mentioned earlier, when we are facing a battle, we need to keep our trust in God and not choose fear. One way to determine if you're trusting in God or living in fear is by monitoring what's coming out of your mouth. Being pursued by 3,000 soldiers and the king of Israel, 
David didn't choose despair or anguish. He didn't choose griping or complaining. He chose to praise God. En Gedi, a place flowing with living water in the midst of a lifeless desert, is a picture to me that God will provide for us even in the most challenging of situations. At times, we spiritually walk through dry desert seasons. But Jesus is there to be our oasis if we genuinely search for him. He is there to refresh us and to restore our strength during the troubles that we face and even after those troubles have passed. Visiting En Gedi is the perfect example of what it truly means to see the Bible come alive. But more important than seeing the Bible come alive by visiting Israel, is the Bible and the teachings of Christ alive in you? Something to search your heart about. This concludes my review of En Gedi. I hope and pray you got something out of this. Perhaps you're in a wonderful season in your life right now, having a mountaintop experience. But if you know someone who's going through some battles at this moment, share this video with them if you think it would help. In my next review, I take you to Qumran and the cave where they found the Dead Sea Scrolls. Qumran will be my final review before I begin reviewing many of the sites in and around Jerusalem. But until then, thank you for watching, and as always, God bless.